Well, good morning. I'm uh, starting Coffee with the Pastor again. I've had a, about a two-week layoff, and so uh, hopefully some of y'all will get used to watching again. Sorry about uh, being a little late today. Uh, we've had a great time. Ann and I got to see our grandchildren uh, for the first time in over a year, and so that was great. And then uh, we also kind of uh, did a trip. We stayed at the Gaylord there in Nashville. We were scheduled, uh, and I will be married 40 years on the 17th, and we were scheduled to be in Hawaii, but that got canceled, so we uh, made a Nashville trip, which we got to see our grandchildren, which made it better anyway. It's New Year, and so I thought we would begin uh, the new year off with starting with the first book of the Bible. We would start with the book of Genesis. And uh, the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. Uh, it states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, that's how it begins. It's a beautiful beginning. I love how the Hebrew sounds. Bereshit uh, bara Elohim. Bereshit bara Elohim. I love the Hebrew language. I think it sounds beautiful and all, but that's in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Uh, God created. Before the heavens and the earth, God was here. God's always been. And the Bible makes it very clear that God's here. God's handling this. God's doing it all. Uh, the word bara, which is the English word create, uh, is used about 50 times in the Hebrew Bible. Every time, without exception, it is used, uh, it is used with God as its subject. It's never, nobody else. There's no human ever creating anything. Uh, in the Hebrew Bible, God creates it all. And I find that I kind of like the Hebrew way of looking at life I don't think we create anything. I think we discover things, and we, we have things called what we call creative artists. We have artists, we have musicians, we have actors, we have all these people, you know, that we say, oh, they're so creative, or even in, in sports, if they do a, an unusual act or something, they go, that's a creative act. Actually, we didn't create it. We just discovered it. And God gave us the potential, he gave us the gifts, uh, God does all the creation. God created. In the beginning, God created. There is really no question in Genesis 1 about who's in charge. Uh, God creates things. He's ordering things. And we're going to look at that during this week about how God orders everything and how God's been part of this. I think uh, sometimes... Both, uh, and of course, when you talk about Genesis 1, you talk about a lot of people want to bring up the, the, con the supposedly the controversy between uh, religion and science. Uh, and I kind of think that we don't need to do that. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King one time said that theology and science ask two different questions. Theology asks, who did it? God. Science asks, how did, how, did, how did it happen? How did we get here? They don't ask who, they ask how. Now, the problem we have is, is when we get to messing with each other's disciplines, I think. Uh, I think it's a real problem for theologians to try and make Genesis 1 a science book. I don't think that's the way it was intended. Uh, I had somebody, I'd said this some time, one time, somebody came up and said, well, you just don't have enough faith. That God did. I said, I have every bit of faith that God did it. I have no doubts that God did it. The Bible leaves no doubt that God did it. He didn't say how he did it. He, he talks about how he orders things and how you have to edit. And you're going to see this. It's beautiful how he, he lays out the days and how, you know, day one goes with day four, day two goes with day five, day three goes with seven, day six. We'll see that. And it's greatly ordered, greatly beautiful how it's done. But it's really like in the beginning verse, in the beginning, God created. Uh, the question in the Bible is, who did it? And God did it. And he's the creative one. 
we discover him. We're his creation. And uh, we don't create things. We discover the things he's created. And so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But then there's, uh, I think, the science sometimes, because they have some theories about how it might have happened and like that, and there are theories, uh, they come and say, well, you don't need a God. You know, we're not. Well, that's ridiculous. Uh, both sides, I think, are a little ridiculous, and there's no need for all the controversy that there is on that. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, I like uh, Jess Moody, who was one of my favorite pastors. And uh, he was a pastor for a long time in Hollywood, California. And, uh, but he had a little saying about this verse that I've never forgotten. He said in the first verse of the Bible that God cooked the ape in a pan of fat and served him on a platter. And what he meant by that is he cooked the ape. And this is the evolutionist who said that there's no God. In the beginning, God. God created the heavens and earth. He cooked the ape in a, in a pan of fat, pantheism, where they think God's in everything. No, God's not in everything. You have God and you have the created beings. And it's never good to worship creative things. I mean, a pantheism thinks, well, all of us have a little God in us, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Uh, there's God, there's creation. Uh, God's not in the sun, he's not in the moon, that's created things. God there's God and there's created things. And then there's fatalism. Well, you know, uh, things just don't matter and like that. Oh, yes, they do. God created things the way they, that he wants to, but with a purpose. So in the first verse, God deals with the, the atheistic evolutionist. He deals with the uh, fatalist and the pantheon. Uh, those who think that uh, pantheists who think that God's in everything. First verse. I'm excited about this chapter. And the other thing I need to remind you about before I go, though, is the name Elohim. Now, the name Elohim is not, it's a generic name for God. Would have probably been used around that whole area. Would have been used for idols. Uh, uh, the Jewish folks did not use it for idols, but, but they would have used it as a generic term for, for God. It is not the personal Hebrew name for God that was given to Moses. If you remember, Moses said, who should I say sent me? And uh, the English translates it, I am that I am, or I am sent you. Uh, the uh, Hebrews translated Yahweh, we call it Jehovah, and through the Latin translation. By the way, the Jews will not, uh, don't say that word. In fact, uh, last night I was on uh, online with my Hebrew professor who's from Jerusalem Jewish and we were translating and I came to the word Yahweh and one time I made the mistake of saying Yahweh so every time after that he says Adonai he wants to remind me don't say that name and uh, so I've had to learn how to say Adonai uh, in his presence anyway and all uh, but uh, but that's not the word it's Elohim and the interesting things about the word Elohim is it's in the plural uh, and it's going to get the obvious it's in the plural because when it goes to make man, and we'll talk more about this when we get there, it's going to let us make man in our image. How do you explain that? It's in the plural. Uh, well, as Christians, we don't have a problem saying, well, it's a Trinitarian God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I, I believe that. Uh, the Jewish folks believe more, they say it's, it was a heavenly host. And when he created the heavens and the earth, that the angels would have been there, and the other heavenly creatures may have been there. And so it was a heavenly host and all. But uh, I have no doubt that uh, it could be referring to the Trinity. Others say, well, the, the authors of the Torah, which either was Moses who wrote it, or it was done upon the oral teachings of Moses. Somebody wrote down Moses' oral teachings. They would not have known that. Well, it doesn't matter if they didn't know that. If it's, if it's inspired by God, you know, you can write things when you're inspired by God that maybe you don't even understand. And so that's a very interesting thing that we'll look more at, that the, the name for God is in the plural and all. Well, I'm excited about starting Genesis 1 with you, and uh, we'll, we'll look through Genesis 1 this week and, and the book of beginnings. 
Hope you've got off to a great new year and hope 2021 brings us a lot better year than 2020 did. Anyway, God's blessings to you and I'll see you tomorrow.